So now uh, we will have uh, the last uh, talk of this uh, session by uh, Adelaide Sibo uh, from the University of Oxford in UK. Uh, we will uh, talk about distance estimation in goldfish. So Adelaide, if you want to just share your screen. Yes. Hi, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yeah, you can put in full screen now. And the floor is yours. OK. Um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you for the amazing organization uh, by uh, the um, uh, Animal Behavior Live organizer. Um, so my name is Adelaide. I'm a postdoc into the, the Brut de Pereira uh, Research Group at Oxford University. And today I'm gonna uh, talk to you about distance estimation in the goldfish and uh, more especially um, about the ability to navigate in space. Um, so first of all, uh, navigation is essential in uh, multiple fitness related behaviors such as foraging, mating or hiding. And navigation can be split between true navigation, where individuals will use maps and compass, or learning-based navigation, where individuals can either uh, follow a trail or use landmark, or in the other hand, they also can pass integrate uh, to uh, perform efficient navigation. And pass integration is the use of self-motion information uh, to navigate uh, in space. And this is what we're going to focus on today. So to be able to pass integrate individual, we need to be able to um, record the distance and angle to the origin to be aware of the position of in space. So for example, you have a drawing here of a little ants following an outbound trajectory. During this outbound trajectory, she will continuously update self-motion um, information and integrate self-movement vector, um, including information about uh, distance and angle relative to her uh, point of origin, so her nest. Um, and this will give this little ants information of her current position relative to her home, which means that when she will reach the foot patch, she will be able to come back to her nest by the straightest possible path. And so pass integrating is very advantageous uh, for uh, different species as it will increase foraging efficiency. It can also help you to find shelter if you encounter a predator. And it's also advantageous in a featureless, partially complex or rapidly changing environment where the landmark cues are unreliable. But how can individual pass integrate? Uh, in uh, 2014, a uh, group led by uh, Okifir and Moser uh, received uh, the Nobel Prize for the discovery of place cells and grid cells, which allow uh, individuals to be aware of the position in space by creating an internal map of the environment. Similar neural circuits have been found in uh, birds and reptiles. But what about fish? Fish are evolutionarily distant from bird, mammal, and reptiles. And today, we lack a cohesive picture of the evolutionary origin of spatial navigation and its underpinning cells. So my project is part of an even bigger project uh, that aims to link neurophysiological and behavioral work. And uh, our group uh, work uh, more especially on the behavioral part of this project. Uh, with the aim to develop uh, behavioral paradigms to inform us about the neural mechanism used by fish to map space and navigate underwater. That's uh, where we came to test distance estimation in the goldfish. So distance estimation is one of the metrics that need to be recorded uh, in able to pass integrate, as I mentioned earlier. And it's a central task to mammalian mapping, mapping system. We chose um, to um, investigate if goldfish especially can uh, estimate distance because this is a model species used in the neurophysiological work um, uh, in a fish navigation. 
We also wanted to determine which mechanism is used by goldfish to estimate distance. Other species, such as crab or ants, can use strident regression. That means that they count the number of steps they're taking uh, in uh, order to estimate how far they have traveled. Humans, for example, they can also use internal vestibular movement or the energy they use to estimate distance. And uh, multiple terrestrial species also use optic flow. An optic flow um, is when an individual measures the degree of visual change uh, due to their own movements, uh, due to their self motion. And uh, thanks to optic flow, some individual can estimate uh, distance. So how did we um, measure if goldfish can estimate distance? We use this uh, rectangular uh, water tank, and uh, we had a gold, uh, goldfish in the start area on the far left uh, that had to swim to a target distance. Once he reached the target distance, I was waving at the fish for uh, the fish to come back to the start position and receive a food reward. During test, um, we changed the start position and there was no cue that indicated the fish were to turn. So the fish had to remember and to turn to the correct distance um, to obtain a food reward. So you will see soon this little fish going out. Um, so uh, the fish were only rewarding during training when they reached the correct uh, distance. And during testing, I was always rewarding the fish uh, to prevent them to uh, get unmotivated. So they, they need a hard motivation. Um, so this is a more uh, global uh, view of the experimental approaches. So you have the start area and then a 70 centimeter target distance. I tested fish, um, I trained, sorry, fish at three different start position, T1, T2, and T3. And then I was testing the fish at three other um, test position, P1, P2, and P3. I tested uh, nine individuals in total. Uh, and here are the first results. So you have the distance travel on the y-axis and all my fish are presented on the x-axis. Um, as you can see, uh, in average, a fish travel the distance that was not significantly different from the target distance, which is the first good result. That means that gush fish can learn and reproduce a target distance. As you can see here, there is one individual G3 that's swimming um, distance that is slightly over the target distance. Um, so this is important. It shows that there is some individual behavior. However, this fish was quite consistent in his uh, distance swim. Um, this is a good indication that uh, overall this one was just consistent. She was just swimming further than the other one. Um, but yes, in average, um, the fish didn't swim different than the target distance. Then uh, we wanted to determine if the absolute turning distance was different um, depending on the start position. And indeed, we find that at the three different start position, the fish absolute turning distance in the experimental tank was significantly different. And this was very important as it indicates that the fish we're not using any beacon or landmark cue, internal or external to the experimental tank to know where to turn in this experimental tank. Then we also wanted to determine if the travel um, distance was affected by the start position. So at the three start position, uh, the fish travel a uh, distance that was not significantly different from the travel um, target distance, sorry. But at the third um, start position, you can see that the fish in average are um, closer to the target uh, distance and um, compared to the start position P1 and P2. And this can indicate that the goldfish might also use some geometrical information to be more precise about uh, the distance estimation. Then we wanted to determine which mechanism were goldfish using to um, estimate distance. So we have the travel distance here on the Y and the number of caudal fin bits. We wanted to evaluate if goldfish can use the number of caudal fin bits to estimate travel distance, and it was significantly correlated. However, here you can stop me and say, wait, this is just totally normal. So further, 
you go the further you swim, the, more, the higher the number of steps or the higher the number of fin bits uh, you will take. Yes. Um, so we also uh, determined if for each individual, the variation in distance travel and the variation in the number of caudal fin bits um, was similar. So if this ratio is close to one, this is a good indication that fish might choose caudal fin bits to estimate distance. If this ratio is above 1.5 or closer to 2, that indicates that it's unlikely that fish use fin bits as a proxy to estimate distance. And for five of our nine individuals, the ratio was uh, below 1.5 and close to 1. However, for the four other individuals, this ratio was above 1.5 and uh, close to 2. Other species, such as ants or crabs, use the step counts um, as another meter. And here uh, we think that it's possible that some individual might use fin bits uh, to uh, estimate distance. Then we wanted to determine if fish use travel time to estimate distance, but um, distance travel and travel time were not correlated. Moreover, when we measure the ratio as previously, only one individual had the ratio that was close to one, but all the other had the ratio above 1.5 and even close to two. So this indicates that time was not used um, to estimate distance. Finally, we wanted to test if optic flow is used by goldfish to estimate distance. So to do so, we had those four different patterns on the left. Um, and we change the background pattern. First, we presented a checker uh, pattern to the fish, which has the same spatial frequencies as the original pattern, but a different geometry. Then we change the spatial frequency of uh, the background pattern, uh, putting a high frequency pattern that uh, double the spatial frequency of the information for the fish. And finally, we remove lateral optic flow by presenting horizontal uh, black and white stripes to the fish. And with this, um, this is the result. So you have the pattern on the x-axis and the distance travel on the y. You can see that with the checker pattern, the fish swim to the same distance. That's a good indication that just the change of pattern by itself will not bonify uh, fish a distance estimation. So it's a good control. But when we change the frequency of the background pattern, you can see high drop in uh, distance uh, estimation. And finally, when we remove the optic flow, so the last um, box plot on the right, uh, you can see that there is high variation. This is the most important result. There is huge variation in individual um, results. And uh, what we've seen here is that individual were very inconsistent and swim to very uh, different distance. So this result indicates that goldfish need optic flow. So they use optic flow, so the degree of visual change due to their self motion to estimate how far they have traveled. Because when you remove it, they just do like usually different um, uh, travel estimates. So these uh, results have been also found in another fish species, uh, Picasso triggerfish. Uh, that also use the spatial frequency of the visual background to estimate distance. So these have been shown when we double the um, frequency of the background pattern, uh, we have seen that individual drop uh, the distance travel. So the mechanism used by uh, goldfish and triggerfish to measure optic flow is different than from terrestrial species. So terrestrial species also use optic flow. So they use visual information, but they measure it in a different way. They measure the angle speed, the angular speed of the visual feature across the retina to determine how far they have swim. Finally, we wanted to determine if speed was also affected by the background pattern. And interestingly, when we double the spatial frequency of the background pattern, we see that there is a drop in both distance and speed. Um, and this result uh, indicates that there is a possibility of a similar neural pathway for the control of speed and to estimate distance in goldfish. So to conclude, can tailfish uh, estimate distance? 
So yeah, we've seen that goldfish can learn and reproduce a travel distance. And this result reassures the use of goldfish as an adapted biological model to perform the neurophysiological study of a special cognition in those fish and maybe discover if they have those neural cells. So is there a grid cell and play cells or similar cells that help them to uh, estimate um, how far they have traveled in their environment and to map the environment. With sounds and similarly to trigger, so uh, trigger fish, they use a special frequency of the visual background for odometry. So this indicates first that visually based distance estimation have evolved early on. Also the way to measure uh, this information, the optic flow is different. It's in all cases visually based. This will help us to a better understand fish underwater movements and also can help us to start predict how change in uh, fish environment could impact their abilities to navigate. The next step will be to um, determine if uh, fish can pass and integrate. This have never been uh, shown before, so can they compute uh, distance and direction information uh, to uh, navigate efficiently underwater. And finally, we also, um, thanks to our colleagues in the collaborative team, hope to find uh, which um, neural cells are used to um, create a special maps in a fish uh, brain. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, I want to thank uh, the Oxnav group, uh, all my colleagues, um, the, organizer, uh, the organizer of the conference, and all of you for your attention. I'd be happy to answer any question. Thank you, Adelaide. That was a great talk, super interesting. Um, so like we already received a question uh, in the chat from A.B. George, so we say that it was a great talk. Uh, he, actually, I think you give a little bit of answer, but uh, he is asking like, uh, what are the ecological importance of optical flow in the fish uh, natural habitat? Do they live in environment that can differ greatly in terms of, con of contrast? So that's depend of the fish uh, species. I, I was it specific for the goldfish? Uh, the question or uh, let's let's give. I mean, no, we say in the fish is natural habitat, but like yeah, no, he said that it is a uh, it is a uh, specific to the goldfish. Yeah. So goldfish um, usually in a bit ponds that are uh, that can be murky, um, but there is. Um, constant, I would say, um, landmark in the way there is, there is algae or um, like rock algae stuff that are consistent and other changing uh, background also. So there is both, uh, yeah, some constant and some changing landmark in the environment. I don't know if I'm answering the question very well. I mean... He will tell us. Uh, so he just say testing population from ponds with different level of murkiness would be a great experiment. Yes, this is a following experiment uh, in the lab run by colleagues at the moment, uh, trying to figure out how uh, different turbidity or murkiness affect um, fish navigation ability, goldfish especially. Yeah, but and I guess it's always kind of hard to know that. I mean, there is a difference between having the ability to do it and having a uh, like a having a really interest to do it in natural condition, mm -hmm. because obviously you can do it, but maybe it's uh, useless, let's say, on the natural condition. Yeah. So because like, I mean, I don't know. It's it's important to remember that um, fish species and other individuals that can pass integrate. They usually use a combination of uh, both like self uh, and use information and also landmark use. Like, for example, individuals that pass integrate, they often um, have accumulation of error around, along their route and using some landmark in the environment help to correct those errors along the route. So we showed here that they can do it, so they might have the neural uh, capacity. Yeah. Um, yeah. neurons to do it, but it's very likely that in the environment they use combination of different cues to navigate efficiently. That's Of course, yeah. 
Uh, actually, I will follow up on this, like because you are talking about brain here. Uh, so, like, I, I guess you are planning to try to make an exploration a little bit deeper, uh, maybe like uh, just like watching what's happening in the brain. So I will not do this work myself, but collaborative team in Israel, um, led by Renan, um, are doing this work. They've managed to put um, neural record their own own live fish and record uh, like a neural cell during like live uh, fish movement, uh, which is very interesting. They find that goldfish, for example, have um, speed related cells or age related cells, so they can have an idea of the speed, of the age of the environment, uh, but that's that's all it's the discovery for now and we're waiting. I, I was about uh, to talk about this because I, I saw their setup uh, two or three years ago. So like, I mean, awesome. I, I, yeah, I, I I wanted to just, just suggest to make the combination of both. Um, but so like, w would you expect, I mean, like, because uh, I mean, I do not remember exactly the result, but I guess that the cells uh, that they detected were more uh, Telencephalon based, maybe. Um, they are placed in the goldfish. Um, what's the name? There's a specific name. Um, uh, I I don't have it on the top of my head. Um, but um, wasn't it lateral pallium or something like that? Yes, lateral pallium. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, so that, would you would you expect, for instance, that um. Uh, there could be also a huge role of the cerebellum uh, into all of this because uh, we know that it's quite a, a central place for uh, all what is motion uh, detection and kind of like uh, active vision. Uh, so like, do you think that uh, uh, it will be possible that uh, it, it's, it has its importance inside the process that you are observing here? Yes, definitely. I think this is where they're going to explore more and there is a high chance we find cells over there, those cells. Okay. Uh, but I think we, we, we are running out of time here, but like a very interesting uh, um, presentation, uh, Adelaide. And uh, like I invite everyone to ask your question uh, if you have more questions to ask her on, uh, on Discord. Uh, I'm sure that you will be happy to reply to them. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.